In this video, we're going to be looking at a deep connection between accumulation points for a set and sequences. And our authors state this particular connection as theorem 60, which says, if M is a point set and P is an accumulation point of M, then there is a sequence of elements inside set M that converge to the point P. So how are we going to get around to proving this? Well, let's see what we can do. I'm going to start by saying, let's let P be an accumulation point for some set M. Now, I want to think about what does that mean? So the definition of accumulation point means that for every open interval S that contains P, there exists a little m inside capital M that's also inside my open interval S. So I can say that little m is in capital M intersect S. And I know that little m is not equal to P. So that's true for every single uh, particular open interval. So now what I want to do is I want to look at this. If I pick any natural number k, then the delta ball centered at p of radius 1 over k is an open interval, and it certainly contains p. So by the definition of accumulation point, there exists an element that I am going to call pk that belongs to M, and it also belongs to this delta ball that's centered at P of radius 1 over K, and I know that this PK is not actually equal to the point P. Now, I can do this for each and every one of the natural numbers, so we can create, in other words, we can construct a sequence that I'm going to write as pk as k goes from 1 to infinity, where all I know about pk is that pk is inside this delta ball, the delta ball centered at p of radius 1 over k, and it's an m, and pk is known not to be p. This is where we have used the hypothesis that P is an accumulation point. Now, uh, I'm going to make the following claim. My claim is that this sequence of PKs does indeed converge to P. So let's think about how would we prove that claim. So proof of our claim that our sequence that we have just gotten done uh, defining actually converges to P. Well, the first thing that I want to do is I want to think about what does converge mean. So we're going to go back and review that definition. Uh, our goal, in order to show that this thing converges to B, we have to show the following. We have to show that if I take any, so if S is any open interval, so if S is any open interval that contains P, we can find a capital N inside the set of natural numbers such that the end tail of my sequence, let me write that as just sequence, so the end tail of the sequence uh, belongs to my open interval S. And um, essentially what this translates to is if little n is bigger than or equal bigger than or equal to capital N, then the nth term of the sequence has to be part of S. 
Now we're going to do the standard kind of technique that we do in all of these problems. If this is my number line and here is P and S is some kind of an open interval like that, the very first thing I want to say is there is a delta bigger than zero such that such that the delta ball centered at P um, is a subset of the open interval S. So this is S, and then I can think in terms of this open interval is going to be my delta ball centered at P of radius delta. And instead of just trying to trap things in S, I'm going to trap an entail inside this delta ball. So I want to find an N such that the entail is a subset of this delta ball. Okay, well, I know what I'm going to do. Now, how am I going to do this? So let me think about that. What do I know? Well, the first thing that I want to remind myself is I know that P1 belongs to the delta ball centered at P of radius 1. P2 belongs to the delta ball centered at P of radius 1 half. P3 belongs to the delta ball centered at P of radius 1 third, and so on. And um, these delta balls have decreasing radiuses, and their radiuses are all integers. And so one thing that I kind of want to make a note of is that um, we know that this is, the words that are usually used is that this is a set of nested open intervals. We'll look at that at a later point, but I just want to kind of want to throw that out there. So that's one thing that we know. Um, the second thing that we know is this. If, uh, let's call it N1 is bigger than N2, and these are natural numbers, so they're all bigger than zero, then I know that 1 over N1 is smaller than 1 over N2, and this is going to tell me that the delta ball at P of radius 1 over N1 is a proper subset of the delta ball centered at P of radius 1 over N2. So what I also know then is that, um, is that if I have K bigger than or equal to little n, PK is not only going to belong to the ball centered at P of radius 1 over K, it's also going to belong to the ball centered at P of radius 1 over N. And that's going to be an important fact. And the third thing that I know is that variation on the Archimedean principle that our author called Theorem 24. Given any delta bigger than zero, there is a natural number that I'm going to call capital N such that 1 over capital N is smaller than delta. And these three facts together are going to be put together to show that our goal actually works. So here's the formal proof. We're going to be given that delta bigger than zero such that our delta ball centered at P is indeed a subset of S. By theorem 24, that variation on the Archimedean principle, there does exist a capital N inside the natural numbers such that 1 over capital N is smaller than delta. And that's enough to say that the delta ball centered at P of radius 1 over N is going to be a subset of the delta ball centered at P of radius delta. And let's draw a picture of that. Here's my number line. Here's P. 
This is P plus delta. This is P minus delta. So that yellow set is the uh, delta ball centered at P. And I'm going to now think about the fact that 1 over N is smaller than delta, so P plus 1 over N is closer to P than P plus delta. And the other side of this delta ball would be over here. So it's quite clear that um, the delta ball centered at P of radius 1 over capital N is indeed a subset of the delta ball centered at P of radius delta because this white interval is smaller than the yellow interval. Now, what I'm going to do is now say the following. Let little n be any integer that is cat bigger than or equal to capital N. Then what do I know? I know that 1 over little n is smaller than 1 over capital N, which is smaller than delta. And I also know that Pn belongs to the delta ball centered at P of radius 1 over n. Well, let's get that in there as well. This fact here, this fact here says that this ball, P plus 1 over n to P minus 1 over n, that red ball, is going to be a subset of the white ball. Oops, let me get my color right. So the red ball is a subset of the white ball. And we've already seen that the white ball is a subset of the yellow ball. So Pn belongs to this, and that is a subset of the delta ball of radius 1 over n, which is a subset of my main delta ball, which is a subset of s. And when we look at this particular statement, we have if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, then little pn is indeed going to belong to that arbitrary open interval that we started with. And what that says is that the entail of the series of the sequence, so the entail of my sequence, is indeed a subset of the open interval S. And that says the sequence of PKs does converge to P by the definition of convergence. And that ends our proof.